Hello, Nick. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, how many titles do you have? Uh, not so many. <laughs> Just okay. a few. No, I actually don't have that many titles. I've got a, a Japanese K1 championship. I've got a European heavyweight championship. Uh, one karate world championship. Um, yeah, maybe some other ones here and there. Are you a karate legend? I... Um, do you consider yourself to be a legend? I, well, to be honest, I don't think that when you're living in it that you really are a legend until you leave something as a legacy uh, behind you. But I think that I'm still on that journey, and I think that a lot of people probably remember me for a lot of the things that I did um, for the last 30 years. You're from Denmark? Yes, I was born in Greece, though. Uh, are, you, are you recognizable when you go through the streets in Denmark? Do people recognize you? Mm, no. I don't think so. I live in Japan. I've lived in Japan for the last 30 years. Oh. So in Japan, they know me. In Japan, they know yeah. you. This is where I made my, my what you could call sign of legacy or, or put my mark on the world, uh, fighting uh, both in karate and then also in K1. And then uh, through that, I was fortunate enough to do movies and TV work and stuff like that. What's your version of the uh, K1 series failure? Uh, Oh, that's a fairly simple question and also a fairly hard one. I think that uh, the management of the K1 at the time um, had an opportunity to, uh, to explore what the, I would call the, the real live version of what Dragon Ball is, uh, where Dragon Ball, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but it's like a tournament where they fight with all different kind of characters. And um, the producers at the time uh, felt that um, the TV ratings were, were dropping a little bit and they wanted to give it some kind of revival and then they started bringing in uh, some extremely big uh, human beings. Uh, we're talking uh, 200 kilo fighters. Uh, I fought the biggest one I fought was uh, 217 centimeters and weighed in 160 kilos. Um, and it just... Did you win? Yes, I knocked him out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's also one of the legacy things I did, I guess. Um, <laughs> No, but I think I think it's it was just too much. Uh, uh, the sportsmanship kind of went out of it, and it, be, it became uh, not a freak show, but it's pretty much pretty close to that. I understand. Yeah. How do you uh, think why why is uh, karate and kickbox less attractive than MMA and, and boxing? Uh, it's not less attractive. It's less popular. Yeah, less popular. Well, I think uh, to be honest, karate is is extremely difficult to get good at. Um, and I think that the journey to go through there is, is hard because at the end of it, there's nothing but the struggle that you have with yourself. Um, but when you look at MMA, for example, you have the UFC, you have all the, the big uh, uh, tournaments. And with kickboxing also, uh, although it's different, there are big organizations. There's Glory, there's also K1 now, um, which has become a, a more organized sport version of what it used to be. It's so it's a matter of organization, but television is also in involved. I think in it's the, the process, uh, the attraction of the of the dream. Like, if, for example, if you're a kid and you're playing soccer with your friends right now, the World Cup is going on. So I think it's a relative, you know, topic to to, to pick on. And say, the kids that play soccer, for example, Pele, he started on on the streets with his with his friends, and and then his dream was then as an 18 year old to go and take Brazil to win the World Cup, and and that is true. So if there is that bigger goal and dream that you have something, I think that any sport could be. Uh, could be big and, and just attract more people. For example, in Japan, um, everybody wants to be a baseball player because baseball is the biggest sport in Japan. So you have all these children in Japan that are growing up with their parents, um, feeding them baseball, watching baseball, training baseball, going on camps and doing everything. And the best of all the athletes go to baseball. Is this because of the American influence in Japan or there is some other reason? Baseball is probably even more loved in Japan than it is in America. Yeah. Yeah. It is incredible in, in bred in, the, in, their, in their history now. But, I mean, originally it probably was the influence of the Americans. So if a kid comes to you and asks you, I want to be a karateka, what would you advise me? What would you say? Well, I would say um, do some research on what kind of style you're interested in. Uh, and then go and visit the dojos, either try a class or have a look at a class, talk to the senseis, find a dojo that is uh, close enough for you that you know you will keep uh, training at, and then just never look back. No matter how hard it gets, um, stick with it, and uh, I'm sure that you will learn something that people only can learn through martial arts. How do you invest your money? Me? What yes, money? you. <laughs> 
What money? <laughs> Did you, was, did, did you make any money during your career? I made a lot of money, to be honest. Um, and I'm, I feel very fortunate that I made a lot of money, but I also lost a lot of money. Um, it, it, it came in as fast as it went out, in, in my case. How did you lose, How did you lose them? Um, three children. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I mean, I think life was... Uh, unfortunately, I was not as smart with my money as Sam Greco was. Um, which I wish I had been, um, but I think it's a, it's a longer learning process and uh, the older I got, the more kind of invested in it I got, I would say. I understand. What do you think about the Senshi series organized here in Varna? I think it's a, an extremely um, interesting opportunity for the young, the young next generations. I'm very invested in it because I, I really feel that uh, they're doing something right. They're, they're giving the children a, and I will call them children because they're a little younger than me, um, this opportunity to learn karate spirit and then also at the same time learn the, the, the kickboxing, learn the MMA so that they can then uh, branch out. Because I think the, depending on what kind of um, personality you have, um, you're either going to be more towards kickboxing or more towards simply just karate or also do a mix of them. Of the mix okay, of when, when your active career and active fighting ends, what do you do after that? Uh, what what are the, the possibilities? Possibilities, I think that if you, depending on how big you are, and I don't think there's enough money to be made in K1 or, or maybe even Sensia at this point for someone to retire from it. But I think that you should um, not just train, but you should keep studying while you're training. Uh, a good example, or a K1 champion um, who worked in a bank uh, while he was uh, just training and became the, the world champion. Uh, and, you know, Ernesto Hust was always working through his career. So I think that you should, you should be able to um, be smart enough about your training that you could also have a normal job or even go to school and get a proper education while you're training and still become a champion. What did give to you? I mean, how did karate change your life? So I spent three years in Japan, my first three years in Japan as a, what we call Ichideshi, which I, I lived at the dojo under our master, uh, Oyama Sosai, and um, we uh, were considered like, you know, those black men that wear all the black suits and they run around and they fix the theater. You know, when they change the sets and stuff like yeah. that, no one sees them. So we learned, like, at the at the the most lowest entry level, of how to um, how to take care of people that are important to you. So our senpais or senseis that we were taking care of them, taking care of the dojo, and I in later life I opened a CrossFit gym, and I realized that ah, all that hard training of learning how to take care of people now translates directly into my business. Okay, thank you very much for this interview. Wish yes. you all the best. Thank, thank you very you. much. It was a Fantastic time to be here. Thank you very much. Always.